Good afternoon, everybody. Um, um, so, thank you, Caroline. As Caroline mentioned, I'm Mona Walsh, Head of Communications at the National Gallery, and this is Matt Terrington. And we'll be talking through the concept of the personal art journey today. Uh, there we are. <laughs> and, um, this is a framework we've developed that underpins our digital planning and enables us to provide digital experiences across all kinds of devices and platforms. So it's taking it we are looking at mobile and apps, but it's also thinking about what the, what the future of those might be as well and how we can um, future-proof ourselves for that. So being in communications, one thing we ask ourselves pretty much every day is, are these questions. Well, two things we ask ourselves. <laughs> um, we're obsessed with how we broaden our audience. Um, so that's about kind of reaching, reaching out to as many people as possible and people from um, uh, kind of very diverse backgrounds. But, and also how we engage more people with the collection. And by that we mean um, how we engage more people and how we provide deeper engagement as well. And the one thing that we definitely obsess about is people. So we're here, obviously, to think about how we can um, drive more engagement with the collection, but that engagement is all about people. So we use, we use this mantra as our guiding principle. When, we, when we're unsure of which way to go, we think about, right, okay, let's go back to the people and think about what they would do and how they, how they can guide us. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So we put people at the heart of our thinking. And um, this gives us a focus to work from. So just to take you through a little bit of thinking how we got to the personal art journey, we started off with looking at the um, visitors who actually come to the gallery. So we do get quite a lot. There was 6.5 million visitors to the gallery last year. And um, these kind of divide up into all sorts of demographics. As you can see, we've put some up there. So mostly people are local, uh, across Europe and um, from across the world. This roughly reflects the same um, visits, the same way people visit our digital estate, our website. We get roughly the same amount and roughly the same split. Um, and um, people come to the gallery for all sorts of different reasons. But the one that we were most um, well, the, the one that kind of interests us the most is what is it, why do they come? What is it they love about the gallery? Now, obviously it goes without saying, people come to see paintings. <laughs> they come to see paintings that are real. Um, and so that, with that in mind, we also had a look around some spaces and places where people talk about the gallery unprompted. Um, we obviously do do some surveying and stuff, but we were quite interested in, uh, to see what people said after their experience. And the one thing, um, so they obviously they talk about the collection, they talk about the paintings. But the, the thing that was really interesting was that there was more than that. They were talking about the ambience of the place, the expertise, the lighting. People talk about the lighting. Um, the grandeur, the atmosphere, the building. In a nutshell, they were talking about the experience of coming to the National Gallery. And we were noticing that it wasn't just the experience that was laid on for them, they were starting to tailor their own experience through their mobile devices. So, um, so you know, tech has gotten much, much more personal over the years. Mobiles are no, just, are no longer just for making phone calls. They are actually a way of keeping in touch with people who matter to us, with networks, with family, um, with sharing our experience. And to some degree, they're also used for shaping our everyday experiences now. So we've noticed there's been um, quite a large increase in the use of mobiles in the gallery over, over the last few years. So people are using them to do things like find out more information about the painting whilst they're looking at it. Um, they were using it, obviously, to take, some, uh, to take photos, and they wanted to share their experience. So with this in mind, we thought, well, we should help facilitate that. So over the, I think it was last year, we installed Wi-Fi to enable people to connect with each other. Um, and use their own devices and whatever it is they already use on their phones uh, to share their experiences um, of the gallery. And for the first time, we allowed photography within the gallery, which in some ways was a little contentious. <laughs> and, um, um, and, but we're much, much more famous for banning selfie sticks, apparently. Um, but, uh, but allowing photography, it, it was, I mean, the take-up was absolutely huge overnight. And um, I don't know if anybody here uh, uses Instagram, but if you look at the hashtag National Gallery on Instagram, you'll see the just thousands and thousands of photos that people are taking and sharing. And what this does for us, I mean, what this means is that, I mean, this is content at a level we can't produce ourselves, obviously. Um, so there's this volume of content going out. And, and it's, um, but I think more importantly, 
it's the it's the way it's relevant to um, to various communities in a way we can't make it relevant. It's it's word of mouth, it, it, the way that's spreading for us. Okay, so we know that people use mobile devices to enhance their experience within the gallery, and that leaves you know that what that tells us is there's probably a lot of things we can do to help um, people engage better when they're in the gallery, but. What about the fact, what about the people who aren't coming to the gallery? What about the people who are just using our website or just using, uh, looking at our, our social media or using apps outside the gallery? Um, you know, how does that experience of the National Gallery translate into our digital spaces? As you can see from this slide, not well enough at the moment. So what this is, uh, this is based on something called the Net Promoter Score. Uh, for anybody who's unfamiliar with that, that is a kind of general measure of customer service and how people um, enjoy the experience of, a, of either a product or a place. So we measured that for the gallery experience and it came out very high, 67%. We measured it as well for our digital spaces and as you can see the gap is quite huge. So we have a bit of work to do. Now the one thing this, was t this did tell us is that, you know, basically digital has the potential to offer more national gallery spaces. Our, our space is actually quite limited to one space in the, in the middle of London that people come to. But if we think of our digital as space, as, as a place to have a national gallery experience, that helps us think about how we can reach, engage and broaden our audience. With that in mind, what we want to do is um, we want to provide a really consistent national gallery experience. It's not going to be the same experience, obviously, everything in digital isn't real. <laughs> so, um, but it's, it's an, what we want to do is a consistent experience, an experience that is as, um, that we're, you know, so people are, are inspired and, and love as much as they love coming to the gallery. And this will enable us to uh, reach beyond the walls of the gallery and, and expand our network. But it really, you know, we had to ask ourselves, well, how do we do this? How do we make an experience on, that's in the digital world as good as coming to see a real painting in the real world. So back to our guiding principle. We went back to uh, thinking about people. You know, so what are they using our digital spaces for? And particularly, what are they using our website for? So basically, practical stuff, obviously. Uh, planning their visit, buying tickets, things like that. That was no surprise. That's effectively what we set it up for, to a certain degree. And also, so people could find um, kind of information about the uh, collection. But what we did find interesting with this piece of research was the second reason people use the website, and it's curiosity about art. It's not to find information about our collection, it's curiosity about art. That's a very broad area, and it's not specific to us or our, or our collection, but it is a space that we can operate in. So digging a little deeper, what are people's interests in art? And I'm sure it will come as absolutely no surprise to anybody in this room it's personal. <laughs> people get, a, you know, people are personally inspired by art. They want to be inspired by art. And, um, and ultimately, to us, this is a real relief because uh, we, we think we have quite a lot to inspire people with. Uh, so, uh, yes, just to uh, reiterate that, so people are inspired by their personal experience of art. And, you know, through our collection, and we know we can never replace the experience of seeing paintings in the flesh, so to speak, but we can use everything else that we have to tell a myriad of stories and to engage people through, um, through those stories uh, surrounding the collection. And by doing so, we can surface the kind of elements of, of, of the art and the stories and the painters and the painting and the paint and the building and all the other things that we can talk about. All those elements we can surface at in, in, uh, various times to engage people who are interested in, in those aspects. But that's quite a lot of stuff to deal with. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of content, and um, so it's all about how we organise it now. And but you know, how can we actually um, make it inspiring for everyone? Because that is effectively our remit. We are for everyone. Um, and you know, we need to pitch this experience at the right level to reach and engage a very, very broad and diverse audience. And this is where digital really comes in to help us. Um, it's not just about. It's, digital isn't just a space for publishing our content, it's a space that offers the opportunity to provide a personalised experience on a grand scale. 
With that in mind, we devised this framework um, to help us design and fit content about the collection. So, for instance, things like our images, research, articles, films, tweets, interviews, games, if we, if we, if we move into the kind of gaming uh, space as well, um, and match that with the, with the types of audience we want to reach at a given time. Okay, we call this the personal art journey, and uh, we believe everybody is on an art journey. And um, you can kind of either plot yourself or, or uh, think about roughly where you'll be along that journey. We call it personal because everybody is different. And we call it a journey as we want to make sure that people aren't categorized into static silos along it. It's a dynamic framework that allows movement and hopefully helps develop people's interest in art. Now, this is a pretty, wow. it's quite a crude representation of it, but it's just to give an indication of what we mean. Um, uh, so, just to see, you know, where people might fit along the scale. Ideally, we would, we would like to help move people along the scale uh, pro by providing the right kind of information at the right time and the right experiences um, that really inspire people and deepen their interest in, uh, interest in understanding in art. Okay, but just to put it all in perspective, at the moment we have a website that is 33,000 pages big. I mean, that's quite a lot of content. <laughs> and, um, uh, and, excuse me, <clears throat> and that's not even all our digitised content, that's just what we have digitised. Um, so we have quite a lot of content that we have to deal with already, plus the kind of content we, we, have, we now realise we have to produce. If we really want to operate in, in these areas, as you can see, most people uh, you know, you've got a much bigger amount of people in that kind of curious and discovering area than you have um, experts in art. So the amount of content and the ways we um, produce uh, experiences, we need to really think about that. We need to think about the scale that we're going to be going through. Um, so it's, it's a pretty ambitious undertaking, and we're, 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 we're very early days, and Matt's going to talk you through some examples of where we're at with this. Um, but ultimately, we want to provide millions of personal experiences, uh, and that's obviously completely impossible to do by hand. So we're going to be using data, digital tools, um, and tech to help us identify and define the audience, but also to help automate some of the content and the, um, the experiences and uh, you know, build those experiences out of, our content, out of our content. So I'm going to hand over to Matt now. We'll take you through the next bit. So, um, obviously, two, we've got three main components that we're looking at for the, to form the personal art journey. We have the audience, which is the most important uh, factor, the content that we, we have a, a lot of, and the technology to deliver it. So, um, in order to make it personal, we need to understand our broad audience. And for uh, an organization like us, and I'm sure like another, a number of uh, similar organizations from, from this room, we've got various different uh, techniques for this. Uh, we run campaigns, uh, we, we see the performance of those, and we've uh, run to specific audience groups, and then we, we uh, revise those and improve those over time. Um, we run evaluation uh, tactics and, and uh, exit surveys and online surveys and user testing activities. Uh, we look at the broader uh, environment trends, uh, buzz monitoring around our audience um, uh, conversations, and uh, increasingly we look at uh, behavioral um, uh, analytics from our websites, from our, we've just uh, implemented in the last year a CRM database for a single customer view, and we look at how um, that's monitoring our, our customer um, uh, behavior. And so we need to combine all of this information to not just understand what uh, people tell us they want, um, but also understand what people actually do, because sometimes they're, they're, they're not the same thing. Um, and in terms of defining the uh, um, individual user needs, what we're hoping to do with the personal art journey is to take some of the characteristics that describe the individual's um, level of knowledge, uh, what languages they're familiar with, what time they have available to, to spend with us, or you know, what, their, what their motivation is, um, and then determine the characteristics of those, those indiv individuals to and perform and build uh, user profiles. 
Um, and once we've developed these profiles, we're hoping to position them on, on this uh, basic model uh, for a personal art journey. And um, as Mona mentioned, you know, the place of how someone fits into the spectrum uh, will change over time, will change based on their motivation at that time. Um, you might come for, uh, to do some research um, as a PhD candidate, or you might simply just come for um, a little distraction uh, into a subject area you, you're not familiar with. Um, and in, currently, we are kind of handcrafting these experiences. So in this example, um, we put, have put together a suite of um, content around an exhibition that was focused on architecture and painting. And at each level, uh, along the personal art journey, we're producing deeper and deeper levels um, of content uh, that require more subject knowledge um, and more time. But because these are handcrafted, all of the links are handcrafted, all of the journey is handcrafted, and it's not, it's not dynamic. Um, so it's not easily scalable. Um, and what we need to do is to get better at cataloging uh, broader content. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with all of the different standards we all have uh, in the archives and libraries and museum sector. Um, and we've all got lots of experience uh, in cataloging. But what we want to um, do is transfer an object-based cataloging experience to an experience-based cataloging um, for our content that we're pu publishing to our, to our platforms. So again, the flip, the flip side of this, of the individual's uh, characteristics is how we want to describe our content so that we can ensure that the right content uh, for your motivation and the length of time that you have available is being, being delivered to you. Um, and this will also, this will be used to uh, catalog our existing content, uh, but also to inform our content strategy going forward so that we can make sure that we're producing information or digitizing uh, documents or um, uh, filling the gap on the personal art journey for, for our audience. Um, and you know, as this is a mobile and technology uh, panel, we need to talk about the technology a little bit. Um, it does facilitate um, how we deliver. Um, so in this model, what we're hoping to put in place is something that's, that is scalable for us. Um, and the foundations, it's all, again, it's all about the audience needs and our content strategy. Um, but we need to join up our thinking in terms of our, our platform. We have a myriad of different uh, systems and databases that we use for archiving, collections management, data, uh, digital assets, content um, management, which I'm sure you've, you've all got a range of. But uh, for us, the key aspect to put in in place is this integration middleware that joins all of this information together and then allows us to publish um, a consistent uh, experience over our websites, our apps, our in-gallery screens, push to social media, or even open uh, the data to allow uh, partner organizations to work with it and produce experiences that we, we just can't. Um, and then, you know, how does this all come together for, for the user? Um, in, in this example, we are imagining a situation where someone has seen on our Instagram post just a, a picture of a Cezanne and they've, you know, they, they're a bit curious to find out a bit more. They might come to our sites. And a lot of people think about personalization as really complex algorithms in, on Amazon or, or something like that. But you can structure it in a way that it's just simply asking the right questions for, for that person at the time and then hopefully presenting uh, a set of content that fits their, their motivations. Um, we also we do want to explore the, the more complex algorithm-based um, personalization. So in this example, we're imagining that you know, someone logs into our site and they've got an account in our CRM database and we've seen that they recently read a technical bulletin that focuses on pigment analysis and then they've been presented uh, some articles that we think are related and hopefully they then you know, those articles would be a mix of something that's maybe a bit more complex something that's maybe a bit uh, lighter or you know it's all it's all related but hopefully it will shift them through the right stage of their personal art journey um, 
And then we also we also use uh, kind of tailored targeted content delivery as well to um, especially in our in our newsletters we look at um, how uh, different content performs to different segments and profiles and um, how people um, engage with that content so we can refine uh, the newsletters to give them a personalized and tailored experience. Okay, so in summary, we all have a personal art journey and as you're probably guessing at this stage, we're pretty much at the beginning of our one at the National Gallery. Sorry, this is going a bit here. Um, so we, we're just starting out on ours. So we, you know, we've done some testing around some of the, um, the ideas around per the personal art journey and personalised experiences. At the moment, we're a little bit restricted by our own technology, our, our internal technology and plus our user interface. Um, and even within those restrictions, we're still finding that people are engaging um, for, they're, they're having a deeper engagement and more people are engaging with it. So it's basically the early indications are it's starting to work really nicely. Um, and how we go about this is combining insight, well, using insight to drive our content development and inform the type of tech we need to build in the future to deliver these personal experiences. And what we're hoping with this is that it makes it sort of platform and um, agnostic and device agnostic. We should be able to do this across any kind of new platform or device that comes up. And ultimately, this is all about leading to a broader and deeper engagement for people with our collection in the future. Thank you.